Today I'm going to give you a tour of my daily driver. It's a 2005 Sprinter with almost half a million miles on it. I've been forced to become my own mechanic, so I've learned a good bit about it. I've remodeled it a couple times, so let's go inside and have a look. Some of my favorite features include the uh, factory optional towable mirrors, the WeatherTech sun visors, and the G-Wagon wheels, 18 inch. Tires fit pretty nice. Have to widen some things out, cut the bumpers way down here where you really don't see it anyhow, and hammer out some fenders in there a little bit. Uh, wheel wells, not too bad. Then, not a factory option, but this one comes with the butters. And a little shelf for the doggy pull out handle for the older folks as I'm growing older and a, a handle here to help you in block out curtains to go across the front there and then this seat swivels around to give the third passenger a nice view of the road there's a subwoofer in here too I see yeah and a little DC 12 volt fan so we don't have to turn the inverter on just for a little bit of air circulation Tell me about your switch panels. This one is for the inverter to turn the 4,000 watt inverter on uh, 110 AC. Run the air window unit air conditioner off of that for about six hours. A remote control for the lighting up here that's good for uh, brushing my hair and such like. Down here we have the remote control for the cheap Chinese diesel heater. Keeps the van toasty warm and I can leave that on whether the engine's running or not. Very low drain on the battery so it keeps the van warm. When I come back to it, it's, you know, don't have to get into a cold van and wait for it to warm up. Important in every camper van, multi-mode O2 alarm. Make sure you don't uh, suffocate yourself. Got the air conditioner built into what I call the aquarium stand. It's just a cedar-lined toolbox. We'll take a look at that from the outside a little bit later. Gives me a nice countertop here that's definitely not in the way. It's not big enough for cooking on, but it definitely holds the coffee maker, the snacks, the dog toys, doggy treats, things like that. Over here we have the uh, bunk beds. They seem to be comfortable enough. It's sort of eye comfort mattresses. Top and bottom, it was a king size mattress. I just cut it down with an electric knife and got some stretchy jersey style sheets off the clearance rack to fit both beds. Looks pretty good. Got touch lights for both beds, reading lights. Underneath the bed, got good room for storage there. My battery chargers, sprinter parts flyaway bag just in case I have to go to work no matter where I am I can jump on an airplane and get to it turn the the light switch well, that light has a little trouble but yeah turn the light switch off right there when I'm leaving the van or if I don't if I'm coming home and I don't want to turn on the big lights I've got a little light switch here that just turns on a little blue sh under shelf light uh, nice dim light for a little more stealthy in the van cabinets built in up here with some under cabinet lighting very handy at, at night. We also have perimeter lighting here that doesn't show very well in the daytime, recessed behind this, this wall. And uh, I'll take you around to the backside and show you where the, the business happens. As you can see, my garage area kind of competes with the bathroom area. Uh, this is my daily driver that I go to work with most days. And uh, when I'm working locally, my tools are right here accessible in the back couple different levels of uh, how difficult a job I'm in to how deep I need to dig for tools. When I'm in camper mode, all of this just moves right over to there. Then my wife's bathroom is accessible. Towel bars, uh, running water here, pump on, running water right from the five gallon tank below. As you can probably hear, it drains out. It's just a hand washing sink, so there's no need for a gray water tank here. Uh, I've got soap that's velcroed to the wall, and even when that water's off, if the door is open, we've got water pressure for the uh, urinal flush. Dog washer, shower taker, anything you need to do out there. Uh, my secret black funnel is right here. We won't talk about where that gray water tank goes, but that does a pretty effective job of flushing it. Park on a dirt road. Use it on a rainy day. There is a toilet light in there that comes on by motion sensor. It doesn't come on during the day. So that kind of illuminates this glass top uh, whenever anybody moves around in, in the bathroom behind this curtain at night. So it turns on a, a dimly lit 
night light for bathroom use when we're camping. Behind all of these tools, we have a Verizon router that's always on. 400 amp hours of lithium batteries. And yes, these are the headache that I've been blogging about from a China seller on Amazon that won't take returns because they don't work very well but they do work better than nothing so they're in there right now. Got all my fuses and such right there and a main battery cutoff up top here always accessible so if, uh, if anything does go wrong we can disconnect that battery pretty quick. Then underneath the aquarium stand there's the inverter 4,000 kilowatt inverter, well, 3,500 watt inverter, 7,000 surge, that runs this air conditioner just fine. Uh, then my audio amplifiers, it's all old school Alpine stuff. Uh, call me silly, but I like it. Got a little ceramic heater here that I can plug into the inverter for those mornings when I'm not using the van every day, but when I do get in the van and just want instant on heat, I plug in that little ceramic heater and I've got heat before the engine warms up or before uh, even the the little kerosene heater that I just installed kicks in and starts doing its job. Instant heat. Worth pointing out, my automatic transfer switch is hiding right down here. So when I plug into shore power, it automatically switches to shore power. When, I plug, when I'm not plugged in, I turn on the uh, inverter. It automatic, automatically switches the entire van to the inverter power. And then around on this side, we have the toolbox roll-off dumpster backed into me here and cut a big hole in the van for me. Could reach in there and grab tools. Body Shop wanted $9,000 to replace everything from here back, and I couldn't do that. So I went on Craigslist, bought this toolbox for 60 bucks, cut the hole a little bigger, sealed it, screwed it, stuck it in there. Started using it as a toolbox and found it wasn't really that useful that, for that as a toolbox. But I had the idea of putting this air conditioner in there. So now as it sits, the air conditioner is outside as it would sit outside of an apartment window. It's vented directly through this vent, always drawing fresh air in through this vent. Uh, there's plenty of room here to set my little Honda generator and a long extended run gas can side by side. Some of you have seen pictures of that, I'm sure. So it keeps all the fuels and everything spillable out of the van living compartment out here in the shed if you will since i don't use the generator very often i've got a 200 amp alternator and that 400 amp hour battery pack i don't need a generator very often i can run that air conditioner anytime i want up to you know about six hours i think depending on how hard it's working how, how often it's cycling uh, picking this toolbox is important you'll see it has a flare or a flange around it all the way it gave me a surface to really bolt to the van and restructure the van where the damage was done so I could do this without causing any weak spots. And it might not be DOT approved, but I think it's uh, better than new, as the old Midas commercials used to say. So one of my problems with this van was uh, if I get up in the morning before everybody else and I want to open a window, I've got to turn the key on. It makes that horrible beep. So we fixed that problem this week with the addition of a little switch here. Key's not on so the windows don't work. Unless I push that button, then my window does its job. Let go of that button. No more window. That way the puppy can't get up here and open unless she gets talented enough to push both buttons in the right place. And you know, my dog is smart, but it'll be a while till she learns that trick. The tower, three quarter inch pipe from the pipe store. A couple of elbows at the bottom to give me any angle I needed. 245s turned right can make any angle you need. Um, plastic cup holders on eBay, an old cable spool. So with over half a million miles on it, you've had this thing since new, haven't you? I've had it since new. One owner bought it in Jacksonville uh, in 2005 and blew up the engine in 2007. So it sat in the driveway for a year before I learned how to be my own mechanic because I couldn't afford to have a dealership work on it. Since then, uh, I've become quite brave. I'll change out an injector in a campground parking lot if necessary. I've definitely done some major engine work on the side of the road on more than one occasion. YouTube and Amazon are your friend with a T1N Sprinter van. If you had to do it again, would you pick a different van? Oh no. Oh no. Best van. Uh, the Volkswagen vans used to have a cult-like following, but Sprinter vans have a cult-like following now with the forums and the YouTubes and all the self-help and people like myself who basically troll the groups looking for people to help, to give advice. Uh, sometimes we're right, sometimes we're wrong, but we're there to help. 
What was the hardest part of the build out? Time, the time invested, setting aside time to do the work because it being my daily driver, uh, I couldn't just tear it apart and I don't have a garage to take it inside. So when it rained and I had the day off, that was really sad. I couldn't do any, uh, any work really on it. But this is the third or fifth build out in this van, depending on how you look at it. Uh, had it for uh, what 14 years now, I guess. So it's been through a couple of remodels and I've figured out some things to do differently each time, a little bit better. Uh, cloth covering the walls was quite a, a new experience for me. I liked the way it turned out, but when it was just an empty van with this busy wallpaper on it, running full walls up and down both sides, yeah, there were some nervous days there, wondering if I had made a bad move. But I think it turned out all right with all the accents and the distractions from the wallpaper.